Let's continue our chemistry discussion with some simple examples and definitions here. One, molecules. These are two or more atoms chemically combined to form an independent unit. So a very simple example of a molecule are two hydrogen atoms chemically combined with each other. Next, we have compounds, a substance composed of two or more different types of atoms chemically combined. Notice you got to have two or more different types of atoms for the compound. We didn't hear that word different before with molecule. So a very simple example of a compound in the human body is water, H2O. You get two different types of atoms there chemically combined with each other. And if you need to know the molecular mass of some type of compound, all you need to do is add up the masses of the individual atoms. So a simple example of that with sodium chloride here, you just take the numbers given right here, which are the masses of these individual atoms, sodium with 22.99, chloride with 35.45, add them together, that would be the molecular mass of that particular compound. Hydrogen bonds are found in many places throughout the body, forming structure and shapes of important molecules. They occur when the positively charged hydrogen of one molecule is attracted to the negatively charged oxygen, nitrogen, or fluoride of another molecule. So hydrogen really likes to bond to get together with those other three types of atoms. Example of this is when water, uh, the positively charged hydrogen atom of one water molecule combines with the negatively charged oxygen atom of another water. If you ever look at two drops of water and they're separated and you get them closer together, eventually they just sort of pull together and they all seem to run together to make two drops into one drop. It's because water molecules are like little magnets. All the little positive end of that water, which is where the hydrogen is at, is attracted to the nearby negative oxygen of the water molecule that's beside it. So if you ever get water molecules close together, they'll pull together. Just like with two magnets, if they're far apart, they don't really attract, but if you get them close, suddenly they will. Water does the same thing. And that does help to hold some things together in the body. We look at serous membranes, that's a good example of where that happens. So hydrogen bonds play an important role in determining the shape of many complex molecules in the body. Look at some different types of chemical bonds, like ionic bonds, results from the transfer of electrons. Now this transferring of electrons is what forms ions. Ions are charged particles. You'll often see sodium with a positive charge and chloride with a negative. Well, think about how that sodium got that plus on it. Remember, the electrons are the things being transferred, not protons or neutrons, just electrons. So sodium loses an electron, it lost a negative, it now has an extra positive. That's why it has the little plus by it. Chloride likes to gain an electron, so there it gained a negative. That's why you usually see a little minus sign by it. After that, we have covalent chemical bonding. Now, here's not where ions are being transferred, here's where they're being shared. So polar covalent bonding results from an unequal sharing of electrons. Water's a good example of that. Nonpolar covalent bonding results from an equal sharing, the lipids. And this explains why oil and water doesn't mix. The little water molecules are like little magnets. They're attracted to each other. The lipids, with this equal sharing of electrons, don't have polarity or charges. The water is not attracted to them. So that's why oil and water doesn't mix. Hydrogen bonds we mentioned before, bonds resulting from the positively charged hydrogen and a negatively charged atom or molecule close to it. And you can also have with covalent, single and double. Single covalent bonds are where two atoms share one pair of electrons. Remember these electrons are shared in pairs. So singles where you got one pair, two electrons being shared. Double covalents where you got two atoms sharing two pairs. So four electrons there. Some other words like solubility, the ability of one substance to dissolve in another. When you look at the water of the body, there's always something dissolved in it. No such thing as pure water in the body. There's always something in there that we'll call a solute. So a good example, sugar or salt dissolved in water. That sodium with its positive charge is attracted to the negative oxygen, and that negative chloride is attracted to the positive hydrogen. Think about if you ever take like a little bit of salt and put it into a container of water. It looks like the salt disappears as it sinks. Well, it's obviously going somewhere that sodium and chloride are being pulled apart 
as they're attracted to the positive and negative ends of those water molecules. So that sodium and chloride is filling the spaces in between that water, and that water and salt mixed together forms a denser solution. Dissociation or separation. In ionic compounds, cations are attracted to the negative end, and anions are attracted to the positive end of water molecules, just like with salt, as we mentioned before. An example again, putting that sodium and chloride into the water. The sodium and chloride separate, that's dissociation. They separate from each other because they're more strongly attracted to the positive negative ends of the water than what they are to each other. And when you put these materials into water and they separate, these ions placed into water are going to be formed what's called electrolytes. So electrolytes are formed by the dissociation of ions put into water. And they're called electrolytes because they're very good at conducting electric currents. How in the world would our nervous system work to conduct electric currents if it weren't for ions and water? You may have heard if you were to touch something like an electric fence around maybe a group of cattle and then grab your buddy at the same time, they'll get shocked. Since our body is full of water and ions, we're very good conductors of electric current. So that current can go from that wire through our body and into our friend if you were to do that. Electrolytes, again, are solutions made by the dissociation of those positive and negative ions. Remember, all those that are positive are called cations. Those that are negative are on, anions. Put them in water, and electrolyte is what you have. Non-electrolytes are solutions made by molecules that dissolve in water, but do not dissociate. Things like lipids won't dissociate. That's why they're good insulators of electric current. Looking on at chemical reactions, we got atoms, ions, molecules, or compounds always interacting to form or break chemical bonds. You may have heard before, you can't really create or destroy anything. All you can do is rearrange it, and that's exactly what's going on inside our body at all times. We're just rearranging matter. And if you ever look at a chemical reaction, often you see some little letters or symbols for, say, the compounds going in. You'll see an arrow in the center and then some other stuff over to the right side of it. The reactants are what you put into a chemical reaction. That's what's seen on the left side of that little arrow. Products are what come out of the reaction. That's what you see on the right side of it. So you're going to put some stuff in. You're going to get something out over on the other side. And chemical bonds are made by synthesis and decomposition. Now, if you're ever synthesizing something, that's the same as anabolism. That means you're building something. If you're decomposing, you're breaking it down. Again, all you can do is rearrange matter. You can assemble things, that's synthesis, or you can break them down, that's decomposition. It's all that happens with any chemical reaction. Anabolism, here you've got chemical bonds are made and energy is stored. Carbs, proteins, lipids, nucleic acids are good examples of that. Dehydration is where you have a synthesis reaction where water's a product. So you got water coming out over on the right side of the reaction. Some hydrogen and oxygen were removed from something on the left, combined to make water over on the right. Catabolism. Chemical bonds are broken and energy is released. Remember that catabolism, same as decomposition. Everybody knows that something decomposing, it's breaking down. So that's chemical bonds being broken. And hydrolysis, when you got water being split and then the com parts combined with something over on the right to form the products. The opposite of what we had with dehydration. And metabolism is the sum of all the chemical reactions in the human body. That's a whole lot of chemical reactions. Now, some chemical reactions are reversible. And there's one very important reversible chemical reaction which will be discussed and looked at in many places throughout your book. And that's what's listed down here below. Carbon dioxide loves to chemically combine with water. It makes H2CO3, which is carbonic acid. But that likes to break down. In other words, dissociate into hydrogen ion and bicarbonate ion. And the reason this reaction is so important is because with reversible chemical reactions, the materials always balance out or reach an equilibrium. In other words, all this stuff is going to balance an equal left side and right side given enough time. So since CO2 is on one side of this reaction and hydrogen on the other, those two things always go hand in hand. When CO2 builds up inside of you, so does hydrogen. CO2 is removed, hydrogen levels drop. You could look at this from the right side. More hydrogen gives more CO2 and so on. 
but this will be discussed in many important chapters like respiratory system. Think about one of the reasons you breathe is to eliminate the CO2 out of your blood. If you don't do that for whatever reason and CO2 builds up, hydrogen builds up. And that's one thing that can cause acidosis. That gets bad enough that can lead up to and cause death. We'll also see here oxidation reduction reactions. Oxidation is the loss of an electron by a substance and reduction is the gaining. Now, often that doesn't make sense. You say, wait a minute, reduction is the gaining of an electron? You got to remember, electrons have a negative charge. So if something gains an electron, it gained a negative. That's why that's called reduction. Oxidation is the opposite, the loss of an electron right there. And you'll see some oxidation reduction chemical reactions throughout your chapter.